What do you call people who are in favor of tractors? Protractors. Get it? Angle measuring protractors. So today we are going to be using the angle addition postulate as well as naming and measuring some angles. An angle is the amount of turn or rotation about a point called the vertex. In this case, this point A here is the vertex. This is the measure of how much turn. So as I make this further and further so you can see the amount of turn, the angle gets larger and larger. For most of our purposes, we will be working with angles less than 180 degrees. When naming angles, you want to use uh, three points with the vertex point always in the middle. So in this example, the vertex is A. So both BAC and CAB are good names for this angle. BAC, CAB. Notice how the A is still in the center in the name for both of these. Now if there's only one obvious angle in the figure, and there is here, I don't see any other angles, um, then you can just use the vertex point. So we could also call this angle A. For most of our work, we will be using three points to name an angle. Now the measure of an angle, usually the number of degrees, is written with an M in front of the angle name. So for this angle here, the measure of angle A is 38 degrees. Now the angle addition postulate is similar to the segment addition postulate, except that we're talking about degrees or radians instead of lengths. So what it means is if D is in the interior of an angle, so here's our angle BAC, and if I put some point somewhere in this inside of this angle, then this part of the angle plus that part of the angle, when I add them together, has to equal the entire angle, which makes sense. The sum of the pieces should add up to the whole. So when you're setting up for problem solving, use the angle addition postulate. I want to see an equation where one side is the whole, can be left or right, and the other side is the sum of its parts. You're adding the pieces of the angle back together. So here's an example for you. We're going to find the measure of angle CAD. Now how can I tell that this is the angle addition postulate? Well, you can see I have a piece here with an expression, and I have that piece, and then I have this is the whole angle. So I have the pieces in the whole. So there's that piece, that piece, and the whole. So I'm going to uh, set up an equation by adding 42 to x plus 3 equals 79 minus x. The rest of this is just going through the algebra steps. So first of all, I'm going to combine my like terms, the 42 and the 3, so I have 45 now. I don't want to have x's on both sides. The easiest way to do this is to figure out where you have the most x's. A plus x is better than a minus x. So I want to get rid of that, and the way to undo subtracting an x is to add an x. So now I have 2x plus 45 equals 79. These simplify, and that simplifies to 2x. Then I'm going to subtract 45 from both sides because I want the x's all together on one side. So I have, now I have 2x equals 34. Then I just really want to know how big is 1x, and I divide both sides by 2, and I get x equals 17. Well, you'd be tempted to stop here, but what did I ask for? I asked for the measure of this pink angle, CAD. So I write down what it is, x plus 3, and I take this x, and sub uh, 17, and substitute it in for x, which gives me 20 degrees. So the measure of angle CAD is 20 degrees. You also have an individual practice problem to do, same way add up the parts, it equals the whole, and then do the algebra. So thinking further, do you think that angle RST could actually be the same angle as angle STR? And why or why not? Also, 
Why is it important to set up an equation instead of just an expression when using the angle addition postulate? Remember an expression is where you only have one side. There is no equal sign to work with.